Money and Me on Your Money, only on Money FM 89.3. Artificial intelligence has grown to be a significant force in every sector as the world changes quickly. Now, all types of companies are utilizing AI to improve productivity and simplify processes as well. And simplifying processes is exactly what AI is doing in the legal industry because in the near future, we might be approaching an AI to help us with our claims or defense on our next faulty television. Just recently, it was reported that litigants in Singapore could, in the future, tap generative AI to help them with their claims or defense and today the courts are testing the use of generative AI in a small claims tribunal first which sees about 10,000 cases a year but what could be next and how much of the use of AI technology can help litigants save more money on their claims and what would this new revolution also mean for lawyers in the future there's no one more qualified than our next guest to help us out with these questions and more so without further ado let's welcome on the show Justin Chan the managing partner at Justin Chan Chambers LLP. Good morning, Justin. How are you doing today? Morning, Dan. I'm excited, excited uh, yeah. to talk about AI. You know, in a in a field which is not usually associated with with artificial intelligence. Yeah, but before I mean, yeah, but before we get started, though. Mm, yeah, but before we get started, I'm actually quite curious to know what do you use AI for these days, Justin? Well, okay, I think AI is very good to set up the to to set up the groundwork, to yeah. get the background stuff out of the way. Um, I, uh, in legal speak, it's the first principles. Mm. Right? So if your claim is one of breach of contract, for example, I sold you a pen, but you know you didn't pay me. Mm. Those first principles of contract you know, can be easily sort of um, ventilated or found through AI. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't need to be chat GPT. You know, I mean, like a Google search could tell you the answer. Mm. Um, yeah. The thing then is this, you got to bring that to a lawyer and say, am I correct? Right. You mm. need that sort of quality check. Yeah. Quite time constraint. I mean, and I see that uh, it's AI kind of like uh, accelerates that process as well. Now, as mentioned earlier, it was re- recently reported that the courts are testing the generative use of AI in the small claims tribunal first. So maybe for the layman's, what would the application of AI uh, helping litigants look like? And maybe you can illustrate an idea for us. Well, um, I, I haven't seen it rolled out in practice yet, but yeah. what I assume it's going to do is help lit- litigants frame both their claim and their defenses. Mm a little bit more, uh, crafted a little bit more legalistic. Because uh, as you know, um, the uh, litigant in person is not allowed legal representation. Yeah. In courts. yeah. So they come in, if, with the help of AI, there would be some kind of base level knowledge of the law. And of course, um, whichever judge is hearing that particular case in the mm. small claims can then sort of guide parties a little bit further on it. So Instead of a shot in the dark, I think the AI will give you the ballpark that mm. you're supposed to present your case in. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Justin. Now, I'm sure that, you know, the costs and the amount that's saved over time is probably something that's on everyone's mind as well. But before we get into what the costs comparison might be, maybe share with us the costs associated with claims or defense in a small claims tribunal as of now. Like I said, uh, lawyers can't represent litigants uh, in the small claims tribunal, yep. I could give you a parallel example. Yeah. I mean, uh, for let's say high court matter, which is anything above two hundred fifty thousand, mm. uh, a full blown trial could cost you in the hundreds of thousands. Ooh. Right? Uh, it's painful. It yeah. is painful. Um, yeah. So where AI would come in is uh, there are a couple of ways that lawyers charge uh, for their time. Uh, one is per hour, mm-hmm. uh, preferred. Uh, one is lump sum cost and one is uh, stage fee. So as you hit a particular stage, uh, you are rendered a bill at that stage. So um, I think AI in terms of time costs would be very useful. Right. It, it would save me, instead of five hours, for example, I might only have to spend three hours or two hours on it because that background work, I wouldn't need to give to a human being to do. Mm. Right? But it comes with a caveat that um, you have to fact check and stress test that information from yeah. AI. 
I mean, uh, I, I think it was in the States that some lawyer got, got in trouble because he just like regurgitated something he got out of it. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, if it's right, well and good, but, you know, I don't think it was in this this situation. Yeah. And uh, if for the listeners out there, saving, or, if I can say this, saving costs is one thing, but do not use... AI as a mean, um, as a substitute. A lot of the times I tell my, uh, I tell some of my clients that, okay, let's just pretend that I went to school for this. It's the perfect <laughs> example. Your Google degree doesn't actually trump that, but, yeah. but I'm, I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen to what, you know, your case theory is, and then I'll, I'll tell you whether it's right or wrong. All right. Of course, there are downsides to lowered litigation costs as well. And there will be people who exploit the nearly frictionless ability to automatically generate legal complaints, and then they flood the, fl- the, the court systems in multiple ju- jurisdictions as well with all AI-written lawsuits. So what do you say to this then? Well, okay, two things. First of all, to bring a lawsuit which is, you know, frivolous or border, borderline without merit, mm. you know, uh, can be done right now, right? Oh. You just you just get the lawyer that's willing to, willing to do it for you. Mm. So it can already be done, but mm. at a certain cost. The worry is that when I don't have to pay a lawyer for it, will there be an escalation mm. of these frivolous claims? I have to say, I don't think so because people... In Singapore, anyway, mm. you know, litigants are punished by cost awards and you know having their case struck out. Mm. So no matter you can for you can sue anyone for anything, mm. but don't forget that at the end of the day, the opponent will seek recourse from the courts, and the courts, if they find that your claim is completely you know off target, they, <laughs> you know they're gonna they're gonna make a cost award against you, man. Mm. So whatever money you saved on a lawyer, you've got to pay to your opponent, which is even <laughs> more boring, right? Uh, we'll see probably a small uptick, right? And yeah. then once the courts step in, then we, yeah, then, then the numbers will decrease. Mm, interesting outlook there. Thanks for that, Justin. Now then, we're also talk. We have to also talk a little bit about you know the emotional intelligence side of things because you know it, there's been evidence to show that it is highly useful for lawyers in numerous ways as well. One of which is making a convincing presentation to the jury. So, to what extent do you see AI replacing the human element in the practice of law, and how much of a concern is this then? If there was one element that AI cannot reproduce it would be empathy for your client mm-hmm. and a dedication to present human being to human being yeah. lawyer to judge your client's case uh, at its highest mm. so i mean ai could have done all the groundwork before that but at the end of the day you must still convince the judge that what ai has found is correct yeah right um, and don't forget, it would be an even playing field because the opponent has AI as well. Right? Yes. So no. in a 50-50 situation, the better advocate tends to win. Mm. Right? And, and I like to say this, if you have empathy for your client, the harder you work. The harder you work, the luckier you tend to get. Oh, is that That's right? That's been my experience anyway. Ah, okay. Yeah. Now, what other concerns do you see arising from the use of AI with, a, with a, you know, helping litigant claims or defense? I mean, since, you know, new AI has its flaws and we're talking about its uh, ability to make things up, including fake legal citations as well. And like what you've mentioned, the, the guy who used, uh, the guy in America who used um, AI to develop his uh, court case. I'll say this, historically, right, uh, when back when I was a young lawyer and the Earth's crust was still cooling, people thought Google, lawyers thought Google was a dirty word, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you use Google, you're not a great lawyer because yeah. you don't know, you know, you're not one of the traditional sources. Yeah. Now Google is totally accepted, right, right in, the, in the scheme of things. So probably need to embrace mm. AI going forward. Uh, in all its forms, um, the problems, I suppose, will will show themselves yeah. at a particular time. Um, I think uh, Justice Aidid Abdullah is the person in charge of uh, bringing us into the new age. Yes. And, um, you know, I mean, if I'm not wrong, he was the one that sort of like orchestrated uh, the court hearings, uh, made them all, uh, most of them Zoom hearings. Mm. Right? So I think 
I think we're on the right track here. Yeah, it is good. And in, and I mean, it's like all uh, the various industries that we are seeing, you know, using AI to complement our workload as well. Now, you know, as there are no lawyers in the small claims tribunal, it was deemed as a suitable testing ground. But do you see the use of generative AI expanding far beyond the scope of just a small claims tribunal, especially where lawyers are involved? Absolutely. Mm. I think it's in a, unavoidable and that's why we, we, we shouldn't fight the tide coming in. Yeah, I think for sure, for sure we're going in that direction because it's, it's a savings. It's a savings for everyone. It's a savings of time for the lawyers, a savings of of course, for you, it's a savings of stress, right? Um, mm. Not a firm not having to hold the same level of manpower they normally would, for mm. example, because some of that work can be carved away by AI. I mean, but we are waiting for AI to arrive at that situation where I can say, okay, instead of like six lawyers, I only need five, mm. right? I don't think we're there yet, mm. but it's not far away. I don't think it's far away at all. Yeah. But then it brings the question as well, right? What would it mean for lawyers in Singapore? Because technology is often blamed for destroying traditional working class jobs in sectors like the manufacturing and retail. So, will AI take away jobs from the legal industry? Are you worried, Justin? Oh, yeah. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it's a, it's a rice bowl issue. So, yeah. I don't think... Okay, I think AI can do a lot of things, but like we, we just discussed that final that final sort of you know heartfelt sincere mm. presentation to the court that can't be replaced there is a chance i suppose that ai will will make a, create a situation where lawyers are just needed at the end game mm. right all the paperwork has been done you just need to present to the court at the hearing and cross-examine witnesses things like that yeah so I guess we could see a transformation of, of firms where they, uh, or the business practices of firms where they try to align the business towards the, the, the back end of the litigation. Okay. Like the, hear, the, actual, the hearing itself. Yeah. Okay. That could be one change. And um, yeah. sorry, uh, as to your other question, it's a dynamic industry. A lot of people leave, a lot of people, you know, uh, a lot of new lawyers come in, a lot of old lawyers leave. So, mm. Um, I don't think we'll see a big hit in terms of numbers because we have that fluid movement of individuals anyway. Right. Thanks a lot for that, Justin. Now then, before I let you go, I want to know your thoughts on how else is AI reshaping the legal industry and what it would mean for litigants and lawyers moving forward as well. Okay. So for litigants, I think a saving in terms of costs, number two, Increase for the entire judicial system. I think we're looking at an increase in the speed at which cases are resolved. Mm. Number three, for the judiciary, I don't think we're there yet, mm. but it's possible that you know AI can. Uh, it works both ways, right? Is uh, from the crafting of the case. What's the opposite? The opposite is deciding a case, right? Mm. So the judge might be using AI, or the ju- judges' clerks might be using the AI to to say, okay, uh, based on all the evidence before us, this is the likely, uh, this is the likely order or verdict that, that will come out. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's the tripartite effect. Mm. Yes, and of course, let's not forget that as much as AI is going to help us simplify and improve productivity in this space, the site that it will never be forgotten or can never be replaced is the emotional intelligence that we all have as humans as well. It's been such a fascinating conversation. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Justin. Thanks, Dan. Absolute pleasure. All right, we've been speaking to Justin Chan, the managing partner at Justin Chan Chambers LLP, to talk about how AI is reshaping the legal industry here in Singapore and what it would mean for litigants and lawyers moving forward. Continue to keep it right here with us on Money FM 89.3. Money FM 89